Hello and welcome to this season's garden orientation and training for the Greenway Community Garden. We are so happy to welcome you as members of our community garden. My name is Christy Hataka and I am one of the garden leaders. I've been with the garden since 2018. I'm a 2019 Master Composter graduate with the Denver Urban Gardens program, as well as a, I hold a master's in soil and water science and a BSc in agronomy and have been involved with urban gardens and school garden spaces um, for as long as I can remember. So our garden was established in 2008. We have 35 garden plots, three which are gardened by the community and have over 40 gardeners. Kara Thomas joined the garden a few years ago and is now going into her third season and is a very welcome member of our garden leadership team. So welcome, we're happy to have you guys here. Many ways to stay connected with us. The easiest is probably via email. Uh, you can also send me a text at any time if you have quick questions about something that's going on in the garden. Uh, we also have a community garden circle, our very own um, for Greenway Community Garden in the Greater Doug Mighty Networks. So this is a great online platform, uh, sort of a social media avenue for us to be able to share photos, gardening tips. Uh, we send out event information uh, on that platform. So we do encourage all of our gardeners to join and participate in that uh, online forum. Each Doug Gardener is expected to adhere to the Gardener rules and responsibilities that are outlined in our online Doug contract and liability waiver. I'll go through some of the main points here, but all of you will have received a uh, email with the full details of this contract outlined uh, in what you signed online. So for community give back hours, our garden has a minimum of 10 hours per plot per season. Uh, that is per household or family. And that would be garden hours that you contribute to the shared spaces and not hours that are gardened within your own plot. Our plot fees and the Doug membership fee, $25 per season. The plot fees vary based on the size of your plot and whether you're sharing it or it's a community plot. And all those are due May 1st. Um, this was an online payment. So thank you for everyone for getting those in in a timely manner. Any plots that are neglected, uh, we will reassign if the plot appears to be abandoned. Um, we'll obviously contact the gardener first. Uh, so if that is noticed, um, please be aware that you can report that. Any concerns to the garden leaders. All of our gardeners are asked to hand water, ideally before 10 a.m. and after 6 p.m. And the use of mulch is mandatory in our plots for water conservation reasons. We are an organic garden, so no synthetic pesticides, herbicides, or fertilizer. And if you are uncertain whether your amendment qualifies uh, for a, an organic gardening amendment, please just email us and we will let you know. There is no on-site storage for personal supplies. So please bring what you need to the garden and take it home with you. Our tool shed is for shared items only that are used by all the gardeners. We just don't have the space to be able to house personal debris. So if you bring trash, um, plant pots, anything like that, and you don't plan to use them personally, please take them home with you and dispose of them um, in an appropriate way. We have a planting date of June 15th. That doesn't mean that your whole plot needs to be planted, but there needs to be some evidence of activity, whether it's weeding, uh, prepping your soil, um, something of the nature so that we know that you are actually going to claim your plot and garden that season. At the end of the season, we do have some regulations around cleanup. Uh, no plants go in the trash bin and more information will come obviously in October, November uh, for that. We are a very inclusive garden. Um, please be kind and courteous to all. There is a non-discrimination clause uh, in, our, in our agreements with Denver Urban Gardens and with the city and county of Denver as we operate on parks and rec land. The garden leadership team are all volunteers and we are Doug designees and are expected to enforce the terms outlined in these contracts and waivers that everyone has signed and has agreed to adhere to. A little bit more on the watering guidelines. Uh, mulch is required, as I've mentioned. We are also encouraging people to utilize water conserving planting techniques this year. So whether that's using core trenches, high density square foot gardening, um, burying olas in your garden plots next to your plants, um, all of these are great techniques to try to reduce our water usage. 
When you are using the garden hoses that are provided by the garden, please ensure that the water faucet is off. Do not leave these wings parallel with water running and active. All it takes is for one hose nozzle to hit the ground or become activated and we have a flood in the garden. It happens every year and is a huge drain of financial resources and also causes damage to the garden beds. So once you're finished watering, please turn the water off and then drain the water from the hose. Do not hang the nozzles from the handles. That is a really great way to break them. Just leave it dangling, um, maybe not on the ground, uh, but we really want to try not to replace those uh, frequently throughout the season. Hoses and nozzles are one of our main expenditures uh, throughout the year and your plot fees go to cover that, um, but that eats up that resource fairly quickly. Couple notes on community give back hours. As we mentioned, 10 hours per season, that's about one to two hours per month, 30 minutes a week. Um, it's a pretty small commitment to help make sure that the garden keeps growing and is a welcome space for everyone. We do track the hours. There is a uh, clipboard with the plot names and numbers. If your name's not on there, there's a few empty spots. And just record the date, the number of hours that you committed, maybe a brief description of the tasks that you took care of. Our workday schedule is pretty tentative, but it has been um, released. So that will be posted soon and you will have received a PDF of it. We typically have um, a main workday every Saturday, um, third Saturday of the month, and then every other Tuesday evening. These are all weather dependent. So if it's uh, storming out, uh, we will not be out of the garden. This year we did implement garden teams. So this is a new structure for our garden. It's a model to try to engage more people in the many activities that are required to keep our garden growing. So this is an example of some of the weekly garden duties um, that mainly have been taken on by garden leaders in the past. And so now with our new garden team leads and folks who have taken interest in different tasks, we're hoping to spread the load a little bit as many hands make light work. Here's our workday schedule. So as we mentioned, we've got our teams. They will meet approximately once per month in the growing season and your garden lead will coordinate that date and time, whether it falls on one of our active Tuesday evening workdays or whether your team is active on one of the weekends completing some tasks, uh, that will be up to the team leads. With the garden teams, we have several different options. We've asked you to choose three. Most of you have been assigned to all three and if not one um, task. So flowers, compost, food fence, weeds and water have kind of been combined and go together, grapes and berries. Um, and so all of these um, tasks are a great way for you to learn something new in the garden and get involved. Um, learning about composting, if that's something new to you, if you've never pruned grapevines, and so we really encourage you to get involved with as many teams as you feel comfortable. And of course, um, we're all very busy. So please self-regulate as far as how much energy you can put into extra duties. This is all um, just an opportunity for you to learn more and get involved with the garden and get to know your fellow gardeners. One of the garden expectations that we have is that you do attend the workdays as is a community garden. We also ask that you read all of our garden newsletters and communications and participate in the trainings. This just makes it easier for us to manage the questions of um, nearly 40 gardeners and 40 individuals. And we put a lot of time and energy into these communications. Um, so it's an easy way to get to know what is happening at the garden season throughout the season. So um, please read them. That would be really appreciated. Our biggest rule in the garden, number one, don't stack the buckets. Number two, no dumping. Please manage your own compost materials. And number three, do not pick produce from any other plot. Um, there is no exceptions to this rule. Permission must be granted from the grower. There's no snacking or harvesting. The exception is the food fence. If you have excess produce to donate, um, there are many ways that you can do that. And we will go through some of those options in the next slide. So we have a Metro Caring donation program. We also use Fresh Food Connect to be able to donate our excess produce. There is baskets that will be uh, fixed to the front fence 
where we can put donation food and anything that goes in those baskets is available to the community. Our garden is locked during the growing season to discourage folks from vandalizing the garden or from harvesting from the plots. We know you put a lot of effort into growing your food and we want to try to protect it. A couple of ways that you can get involved with our donation program is signing up to be a driver, um, offering to participate in the summer harvest. Once things get growing, there's a lot of produce to harvest and process and package for the drivers. And also we will have a donation plot where we grow food just for the donation program. So that plot will need help watering and weeding throughout the season. COVID is still a thing. We are still in the middle of the pandemic and there has been a huge rise in cases nationally, but also in Colorado. So just to reiterate, if you are sick or experiencing any COVID-like symptoms, please stay home. Complete your mandatory five to 10 day quarantine and isolate and do not come to the garden. We have watering teams that can help you if you need any assistance. Um, if you do feel that you've had an exposure, it's better to be safe than sorry. We have many immune compromised and vulnerable individuals who garden in our space and we just want to protect everyone. Um, make sure that they are um, kept well and healthy. We do have a couple open plots um, this season. So there's a small plot in the front row. And then we also have um, a large open plot um, right in front of the shed. Uh, there will be a community plot, a couple community plots that will open up later in the season. So we will be harvesting these for the donation program. Uh, but if you do want to change your plot or move around, these are some options. So reach out to us if you are interested or if you know someone else who would like to join the garden. Food fence. I alluded to the food fence. Um, this is the perimeter fence where we grow food for our community. Because our gates are locked and our donation bins are located on the outside of the fence, this is another way that our community can snack on some of the fruits of our labor. Uh, this year we will try to plant some baby pumpkins. Uh, this fence has had some damage, so we will be delaying that until it's fixed um, to start growing anything on the fence but we do have some sites that have already been prepped. And once it is time for those seeds to go in the ground, we'll sift some compost and get some plants growing along the food fence perimeter. Doug has many trainings and workshops. Some of their resources are online. You've probably received these PDFs in previous early season emails, but if you are interested in joining any of their events, um, check out their calendar of events online. We also offer through our own garden, many garden trainings throughout the season. This is the new gardener orientation that you are listening to now. We also have a YouTube channel where we'll be posting a more in-depth composting 101 training along with our worm bin training and some general planting tips throughout the season. Our garden newsletter is a wealth of information. Again, please read those. Um, many of your garden questions are typically answered. If you have another question, please send us an email and we'll include an answer either immediately or in the next newsletter. For now, our main compost area is closed. This is a no dumping zone. So one of the sides has finished compost that is ready for sifting. The other side has brown materials like our open area that need to be processed. If you have greens, that is good weeds, which can go um, into the compost program, either put them on the tumbler, this is to the right of the main area, or put them into the other black bin that is in the compost area. So noted here. Brown materials, this is, um, Materials that need to be processed, they need to be chopped before they go into the tumblers. So that's something that will happen at our next work day. And this is a sheet outlining the compost program. It's fairly complex. Um, composting is a fine art and science. And so this will be a full complete training that we will go into with the compost team. What everyone can do to help is please don't put um, materials where they don't belong. If you don't know where your weeds go or your greens or your browns, leave them in your plot in a pile and contact one of the garden leaders or ask someone at the garden and they will guide you to the right place.
I've mentioned good weeds. This is things like henbit, pigweed, purslane. These are all okay to compost. If you have grass, dill, onions, any kind of flowers um, that you're deadheading, those can all go into the compost area. Some very deep taproot weeds, you'll have to put a little bit of effort to dig these weeds out of your plot or the plot um, borders, while geranium kind of looks like geranium or wild carrots, uh, thistle and dandelions, um, these are all fine to compost. We try to get the thistle before it gets too big and prickly, because um, that can be a little bit uncomfortable to work with, uh, but do your best. Morning glory is also a weed that's fairly invasive. It will grow on our fences and choke out our hose um, handles. So try to dispose of that if you see it starting, um, get ahead of it. Bad weeds, puncture weed is probably one of the worst weeds we have. This does not go in the compost. The last thing we would want is for our compost system to get um, infested with goat's head or puncture weed and then for that to end up all over the garden. Bindweed is our number one nemesis in the garden. So bindweed grows everywhere. Uh, if you see it in a plot, best thing to do is dig it out. If you're noticing it in the pathways, you can use a hand trowel, a saddle hoe, or a regular hoe to just cut it off at its roots. Um, bindweed does not go into the compost. Uh, this is something that we need to manage throughout the season. So our weed team, as well as every gardener, um, is responsible for helping to manage and maintain bindweed in the garden. Please bag it. Do not put it into the compost. We have black buckets located uh, right underneath this sign at the tool shed to the left of the tool shed. Uh, this is where you would put bindweed. This is not where you put good weeds because otherwise uh, you're contaminating our buckets that come off site and have to be disposed of and someone needs to sort that. If you don't know what your weeds are, there are these gray trays around the garden, leave it on there and the weed team or the compost team will sort through, pull out the bindweed and then put your good weeds into the tumblers where they can be processed and put into the compost program. We have a lot of invasive plants. Um, so anything that goes to seeds, uh, especially sunflowers are considered invasive in the garden. Dill is a bit of a problem. We all like dill, um, but it has really taken over. So if you have any lettuce or dill weed, um, it's great if it bolts and produces little flowers. They're good for pollinators and beneficial insects. Uh, but before they go to seed, um, please either chop them down um, and do not put them into the compost once they've gone to seed. Sunflowers are allelopathic. If you grow them in your plot, it will prevent your vegetable plants from growing to their fullest potential. We do not allow sunflowers to be grown in personal plots. Uh, this is a decision from the garden team this season because of the invasive nature of them and the burden that they have caused for the last few seasons on the garden team. So if you are planning on planting sunflowers, please choose a different pollinator plant for your garden space. There are many shared plants to harvest um, in the uh, shared areas, perimeter areas along the fence. We've got lots of chives, lots of green onions that you can either dig up and have your own or just chop them and use them. Tomatillos will start sprouting up. If you plant them in your plot, they will come back next year. So. Uh, we're also going to plant them along the perimeter fence so that they can be snacked on and shared by our neighbors and members of the community. This season, our main budget item is a 8x8 garden shed. It will be installed on June 3rd. You'll see there is a cement platform that has been poured. Please do not mess with it. Uh, once the garden shed is painted and dried and ready to be um, have things stored in it, we will figure that out along with the gate uh, lock and um, how we're going to handle access. Uh, our seasonal water bill is covered by your plot fees. That is one of our main expenditures as well as garden hoses. Uh, some of the other budget items that we're hoping to tackle this year as if we have any funding left after building the shed uh, is to have a community message board. We've had our construction team, thank you to Scott and Bobby, who have re been repairing edges of the, the garden beds and doing a lot of work this season um, to get us all ship shape. 
I know things are looking bare, um, but pretty soon our gardens will be growing in abundance. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this garden training. Thank you so much for being a part of our garden. And if you could leave your favorite vegetable that you like to grow in the comments below this video, then we can mark you off um, as having completed your garden orientation training for the season. Thank you so much. We'll see you in the garden. Take care.